everyone, do you want a military sci-fi game setting for Savage Worlds where you can be a badass military person, soldier, mercenary, all sorts of really cool stuff? Well, then I think Battle Lords of the 23rd Century might be for you. It's a savage world. Strangers a weird war. It's a savage world. Bosses do it. Hey everyone, it's Carl with Tabletop Tango. Take a look at the things down below, the bubbles, do those things. Um, support us, watch the website, do all that kind of good stuff. But what I'm pretty excited in... Uh, We've been talking back and forth on Twitter for a while, and, and I had a chance to start scanning the book. But what I'm pretty excited is I've got the team uh, from the Battle Lords, who are responsible for Battle Lords of the 23rd Century, um, which has some exciting stuff coming up, right? Um, got a Kickstarter in the, pro in the, in the works coming up. Um, if you're watching this video after the Kickstarter's over, all this information is really useful, and it's about the setting, and you can still use that to learn and understand. So don't skip it. Keep watching it. Um, so let's let's introduce everybody. So let's start off with uh, Tony. Tell me all about who you are and what you do at the team with the team. I'm Tony Oliveira, 23rd Century Productions. Uh, they they around here they call me Executor, which is uh, both a pun and play on words. I keep everybody moving, uh, and if they don't moving, uh, if they don't keep moving, uh, then I execute them. So. Uh, that's how I got that nickname. Uh, I, I'm a, sort of a jack of all trades around here, but mostly my job is to clog the employees and make sure they're working. That sounds like fun. All right. <laughs> Dave, how about you? <laughs> You're one of the floggies, but what, what else do you got going? Depends <laughs> on the day. <laughs> Tony's been uh, on the receiving end with regards to certain activities, so it just kind of depends. Um, yeah, my call sign CDO. It's OCD in the correct alphabetical order, as it should be. Uh, right now, I'm in editing hell. I'm constantly looking through and finding up. Oh, that's not an apostrophe. That's a, that's a left-handed single quote. We need to fix that. <laughs> oh, look. That table tab is off by four pixels to the left. Yes, I can see that scanning through. Oh, look. That's vertically justified different than that. <laughs> okay. So I'm the one who's going through that uh, on the Savage Worlds course right now as a matter of fact uh so we're about 140 pages in and getting a little slap happy at times uh with some golem references so <laughs> <laughs> other than that uh help with game rules and, and uh, content creation very cool very cool that sounds that sounds like hard work uh <laughs> kurt how would, you, how would you introduce yourself and tell us what you're doing well i'm kurt they call me the viking um Mainly for my years of, of martial arts play, Tony and, the, and Dave used to just throw me around and I'd get back up and they found that quite amusing because I'm not exactly a small individual. And uh, <laughs> so uh, I do a lot of the writing on the species and the equipment uh, and get those up. I'm also the one doing a lot of the formatting for the uh, the book on the end of it. Um, uh, assist Tony with that. So all the layout and stuff along those lines, we kind of put that together and uh, go from there. Very cool. It sounds uh, like uh, sounds like you guys are working really hard. I, you know, and and it sounds like there's a lot of work going on now, and there's a good reason for that, right? Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, um, what's coming up, what you're doing right now? Yeah, we've really well. I, I tell people it's it's four or five people over here trying to build a building to give them an idea how many projects we're working on at the same time. Um, we've got two big projects right now. One is we have uh, successfully kick-started our fully armored uh, gear manual for classic battle wars, and that will hopefully be shipping in two or three months. And the other big project we have is we are getting ready to kickstart Battle Wars of the 23rd Century for the Savage Worlds game system, uh, hopefully in the next month. Excellent. That's that's awesome. So let's talk really quick and dig in a little bit about I mentioned, you know, it's a military sci-fi, a lot of stuff. Give me give everybody kind of a feeling of, you know, the theme, the feeling, you know, kind of, you know, if you're playing this setting in Savage Worlds coming up, you know, what's the feeling? What what are you um, you know, what are you trying to impart on the the player? I usually describe it to people as you're playing expendable corporate mercenaries 
uh, working for a thankless mega corporation in a galaxy of war. Dave's got some some pretty good analogies that he likes to give people in terms of describing the battle war setting. Uh, I'll, I'll leave that to him. Yeah. So I would say um, dystopian is kind of the starting point. Um, so if you there's a lot of different ways of playing in the space. So you can play more like Starship Troopers, you're offending off the uh, the hordes of invading aliens. We've got that. Uh, it could be that you're doing more of a, you want more of a spy or a um, mission-y kind of a feel um, where you're doing something like vaguely like Ocean's Eleven, but in the far, far future, you could be doing exploration. Um, but it's gritty exploration. It's not Star Trek with all the nice, pristine, happy things and <laughs> lots of discussion. No, no, things go horribly wrong. It's probably close to Galaxy Quest. Uh, <laughs> And uh, we've got, um, let me see, I didn't cover, oh yeah, sometimes you're out there on the fringe just trying to make it so uh, perhaps a little vaguely like Firefly slash Serenity, um, where you're just trying to uh, pick up whatever odd jobs you can, keep your ship going, and uh, try not to get shot. Very cool. So is this, um, would you consider it more, we're going to dig into maybe more around the mechanics and the stuff that's in the game. Do you consider this more hard sci-fi? or you know uh, softer sci-fi or where do you guys think um you know so if somebody's picking this up are they going to feel like hey i you know i'm in the future and this is you know high techy and i i get it i, I kind of think it's in the middle oh okay Kurt. i i i think we're more along the science side now i'll say that because dave's a, a, a got a physics background um Tony's got a biology background and I've got an engineering and nursing background. So we kind of took a lot of the hard sci-fi and anything you could think of that you could possibly do or need to be done. It's in there. <laughs> it literally, we covered gamut. And a lot of times the um, technical terminology in it is correct. And same thing with things on the species. Like we have some species that uh, actually work at colder temperatures and they drink fluids that are liquid at that temperature. And so we've had a number of people that were uh, uh, pretty much geeks going, hey, I work with this. I know this is liquid <laughs> at this temperature. You guys, this is, a, this is a fluid they drink? That's awesome. And so um, there's a lot of that kind of nuggets in there. We kind of uh, hide it unless you're truly a, a nerd to, to understand that kind of stuff. Well, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I, I like um, I like things that are kind of more speculative technology growth and where it is versus you know Shadowrun type stuff. And no disrespect to Shadowrun, but um, I like that idea of something a little harder. And you know, you get in and it's like that makes sense. Technically, that makes sense. You know, so that's cool. So so you're you're doing us. You know, you originally had um, the system was. Uh, you know, kind of a standalone um, game, and now you're bringing it to a setting in Savage Worlds. What and what makes a setting a setting is there setting rules. There's um, you know the, the things that drive the flavor. Um, you know, Savage Worlds, great settings really make the flavor of when you're playing. So, what kind of things from a setting rules or from flavor do you bring from uh, rules or additions that? Um, are unique and, and really kind of define, you know, how you guys are doing things. I like to describe it as bringing futuristic armored infantry combat to Savage Worlds. Um, we've got a great, so Battle Wars has been around for more than 30 years. So we have a great sandbox for people to play in, in terms of alien species. There are 14 different alien species uh, that they can play. Um, and not all of them, even though they're in an alliance together, not all of them get along together. Um, so you've, you've got sort of that tension. Uh, but really, one of the things we wanted to bring into Battle War, or bring into Savage Worlds from Battle Wars was the armor mechanics and, and the weapons mechanics. Uh, in Battle Wars, you're almost always wearing armor. Uh, and the weapon systems in the game are designed to find ways around that armor. Each weapon system uh, has a different mechanic for bypassing that armor. You can defend against most of them, but not all of them. So it encourages people to sort of have a diverse weapon mix to try and find the chink in their opponent's armor. Uh, and there's a whole series of mechanics around the interaction between the different weapon systems and the armor. 
um, all of which is highly customizable. You can build pretty much any suit of armor you think of. Um, and the other mechanics that I think are unique to the setting, because it is military sci-fi and, and military, everything's built by the lowest bidder. So we have <laughs> rules for weapon malfunctions that are part of the game. And we also have rules for combat stress, which works a lot like the fear table in Savage Worlds. Where sometimes you freeze or panic, and sometimes you go into a berserker rage. <laughs> just, just go out there and doesn't matter what. Just you know, laying down fire, trying to get from one side to the other. That's cool. That's cool. And and I was looking. I was reading through. Thank you. You gave me a kind of a pre-review copy, and I was looking through that. And I think that is. Um, I think you hit it on the head. That really is something that's differentiates your setting. It's a big book, right? The one you gave me about two hundred pages. But there's really, if somebody wants more um, meat around armor and weapons in a kind of a modern future setting, we know Savage Worlds, that's not really its bread and butter, right? You know, you've got a gun and a gun's a 2D6 and another gun and it's a 2D6 and, you know, another gun's 12, 24, 48, another gun. It's really interesting that if, if people really like to customize and feel really special on how they gear themselves out, you guys... That's definitely something that you've that you've brought in, and I'm guessing that's that really comes across from the game that existed, and and that flavor you bring in the Savage Worlds and try to expand that out for people who like that. Yeah, and yeah. I would say for people who really like the customization aspect of things, they may want to try the core rules because Savage Worlds is um, not nearly as granular when it comes to rule set. So um, there's a lot of opportunities in the traditional rule set that you just can't quite play out here because it's not enough granularity. Very cool. Very cool. So um, any anything else? Uh, I'm, I'm going to get into the book specifics, like dig really in. So when people mm -hmm. say, I'm going to I'm going to jump on this Kickstarter and, and I'm going to put my money down, we know it's, you know, lots of meat already with, you know, 200 pages. But what kinds of things will they get you know what when they're when they're going through and and they're we already talked a little bit about there's a lot of cool armor rules and you know weapons rules but what what's the meat there what, what are folks going to see um well the first thing i would mention is that um even though that you've got that beefy 200 page rule book we actually have three books already written for savage world so Whoa. in addition to the core rule book um, there's the Carnage Companion, which is kind of like a player's handbook, um, and there's the, there's the Alliance Setting Guide. And depending on how well the Kickstarter does, um, as as we reach stretch goal, goals, more and more of those books will become available. So there's even more content out there if people want it. Um, but okay. in terms of the core rules, but maybe you were going to jump in? Yeah, I was going to jump in. So tag back to previous statement about we're really, 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 <laughs> really busy. <laughs> four books that we're working through to lay out and uh edit and uh format and all of that so yeah sorry go ahead Tony. Yeah, i thought he was going to mention that the traditional the classic battle is 540 pages long, so that's 200 doesn't seem that big um <laughs> but, uh things you're going to see in the in that core rule book um like i said the 14 species um and, and how they all interact with each other some like each other, some hate each other, some tolerate each other. Um, you're going to get a bunch of new uh, edges, and many of them are species specific. So that if you pick a certain species, you're going to get access to edges that only that species can get. Uh, and it, it will help you uh, bring out different abilities uh, in that species. We also have a bunch of uh, military and professional uh, edges. So if you want to be a sensor systems expert, expert or weapons expert for a particular weapon system we have edges like that uh and there are a few new hindrances in there as well uh we've got the armor uh as you mentioned earlier and that goes from body armor to heavy armor which is pretty much immune to small arms fire all the way up to mechanized battle armor um and included in the armor chapter is at least a couple hundred armor options there's a a mechanic in the game where you can add options to your armor to your heart's content you want it to fly you want it to have a laser anti-missile system you want sensor systems communication systems it's all in there uh, and there's even more in the carnage companion um, and then in the weapons uh, chapter we go over 
all of the weapon systems and the different effects each of them have on armor and personnel, if you're unfortunate enough to get shot by one while not wearing armor, <laughs> which typically in Battle Wars is going to be bad. Um, everybody wears armor for a reason. <laughs> um, and then we go into the uh, equipment. Uh, I have a ton of uh, sci-fi equipment for, as Dave mentioned, for espionage, for military. Uh, and then we also have what we call matrices, which Savage World players will know as powers. And there are three species in Battle Wars that have matrices or have powers, and each one is tailored towards a particular discipline. There are energy controllers and empaths and healers and anti-healers if they're if they're evil, and uh, they all have access to certain powers from Savage Worlds, um, as well as a, some a few new ones. And we have a whole evil. list of. We're not evil. We're just misunderstood. Misunderstood. And um, <laughs> uh, there's a whole section of power modifiers uh, that are unique to Battle Wars that we brought in. So you can use all those standard powers from Savage Worlds and tweak and modify them in new and unique ways, depending on which type of matrix controller or power user you are. So, so it sounds like um, you're you're. Are you adding new powers? Um, that kind of represent what your your history comes from, or are you trying to leverage the existing Savage Worlds powers and and add new power modifiers, kind of like Rift does with the Mega Power modifiers? Bring your own to the table. Our goal was to utilize the existing Savage Worlds frameworks wherever we could. Um, and to answer your question, we're adding a few new powers. There's two or three that we couldn't get Savage Worlds to model with existing powers. But for the most part, it's a um, new modifiers. There are a ton of new modifiers, and the modifiers are specific to each type of, of matrix controller. So the empaths have modifiers for Savage Worlds powers that model that sort of empathic or telepathic or telekinetic feel, and the energy controllers have their own, and, and the healers have their own. But for the most part, it's modifiers to the existing Savage Worlds powers. So each, so each arcane background you know, using that term, they'll have their own set of modifiers for the powers that, you know, when their powers overlap, they might have their own modifiers because of right. the arcane. Well, that's interesting. I, I don't think I've seen that in a setting before. Um, not that I can recall. So that's an interesting take on it. Um, definitely will give you some, you know, not having read in depth that part, but I guess that would definitely give some additional flavor for, you know, if I'm going to go with this direction or this direction, I get you know, I get a different feeling of what I can, you know, push uh, from a modifier standpoint. So that's pretty cool. I, you know, again, sounds pretty neat. Uh, so you said, so I know there's a lot of edges in this book, you know, just scrolling through. But but now that you mentioned, it makes a lot of sense. You, you've bucketed it up based on species, based on specialties. And so the player's not going to be overwhelmed as they're trying to grow their character through, you know, a progression. There, there's... They can keep the envelope not, you know, there's not 70 to look at. There's a nice progression there. So um, so, so when it, when people see how many is in that book, it's not, hey, look, we're not overwhelming you. It's It really helps drive some interesting, a species has an interesting path they can take while also having their professional path. So that's pretty, that's, that's, a, that's a nice take it too. Like, sounds like it's probably something that brought, you're bringing across from your, um, the original version of it. Um, kind of that idea probably, right? Each, each species has particular quirks or abilities or talents. And, and um, beyond what you start out with for that species, they're represented uh, for the most part by adding edges uh, to that character. Very cool. Very cool. So so, so we talked really um, kind of generically about the the game some of the the cool things it brings that you guys think are bringing to the table the armor the weapons the customization um the content of the book there's a lot of stuff there but let's talk some specifics right just so you know somebody you know when they're looking at jumping on the kickstarter let's pick like one of the um let's talk a little bit about some of the species right you know pick an interesting species of the 14 that's a lot you know there's a lot of stuff to choose from there but let's mm -hmm. You know, it puts you on the spot a little bit. Let's pick a species and go, well, here's kind of an interesting edge they might get that someone else. 
they'll paint a picture for somebody if if you will <laughs> i'll let kurt pick out a species and because he wrote most of the species and then i'll i'll chime in with some of the specific edges that they kurt what's yeah. your favorite um i think and in, in this was because it kind of uh uh made a joke especially with the uh uh, Savage Battle Wars conversion was, uh, I guess there's an edge called the uh, two arm kid. Well, ours is the four arm squid. <laughs> so the we have a species uh, uh, that's basically uh, so um, uh, conniving, vicious, uh, and pragmatic that they de- developed uh, eyes on both sides of their head so they could always see behind them. That way nobody can sneak up on them. <laughs> and they are they have four tentacles and uh they're pretty pretty squid like, uh, except that they like to eat their prey live and um you know uh praise any lesser being. And they probably so define a lot of things as lesser beings, right? <laughs> yeah, humans are included in that. Um but Alliance Law says they can't do it, so their motto is don't get caught. <laughs> so um yeah that's that's been one of my favorite as i was going through helping uh uh read on that one and i think they've got a couple other ones that are uh a little little interesting as well now, so, and their whole legal system is if you get caught it's not so much that you got caught and it's against the law it's you're clearly inferior and you can be eliminated but if you can pull it off and not get caught you didn't really break the law that, 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 They're very. That, I mean, I could see that, right? I think in uh, some European countries, uh, it might be Finland or something. If you can, if you are able to break out of jail, they're not going to arrest you for that and, and add more charges because they expect you to do it, right? So, <laughs> sounds like the species is we expect you to break the law, so just don't get caught. <laughs> um, very cool. That, that species is called the uh, the Fintari, and they are, like uh, Kurt mentioned, a, a four tentacle essentially a squid-like alien. Um, so he did mention the two-gun kid and the Fentari get the four-gun squid, which, believe, believe it or not, I wrote that edge and it did not occur to me until one of our play testers was like, why isn't it called four-gun squid? And I was like, oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> and then we went back and changed it. Um, that's why you play test, right? <laughs> that's right. Um, they, instead of, um, uh, if they have the frenzy edge, uh, they can get additional edges that allow them to take advantage of their additional tentacles, arms. Um, so they have walking, uh, Cuisinart is one of their edges. And the improved version of that is walking wood chipper. Cause you really don't want to get in front of a forearm Fentari with a bunch of edged weapons, frenzying and flailing around. Um, <laughs> uh, Kurt mentioned that, you know, with their eyes, they can see pretty much all around them. So they have from all sides where they can, um, uh, make melee attacks against uh, people in basically 360 degrees. Uh, they can reach over shields. If you're if you're looking for a a, a melee intensive species or character to play, the Fentari are probably um, uh, one you'd want to look at. So it sounds like um, so this kind of this plays right into when you're talking about how the edges are aligned with the species. So for this particular species. The edges they're going to be picking, they're not going to pick like two gun kid. I mean, they've got an edge that's really aligned with what they are. Is that kind of similar for the other species too? That they that you know core books edges is kind of like set those aside because there's really something that makes a lot more sense in the in the setting. Sort of what we did because uh, I wanted to build on the, the the Savage Worlds rules when we could. So for example, four gun squid. You need two gun kid as a prerequisite. Oh, okay. And so, for once you take two gun kid, if you're a Fentari, then you also have the option to take four gun squid after that. And it sort of builds on top of that and gives you expanded capabilities in that same vein. Oh, okay. They, that that's totally totally makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, very cool. So, just to kind of we talked, you know, again, I, I got into the setting mechanics. You know, you talked about what you can be. Is there anything from, uh, uh, you know, kind of the the setting guide, you know, gazetteers, you know, the, the feel of the setting, you know, like you know, when we talk about cyberpunk, you know, we got mega corps that are dystopian, you know, owning things and everybody's just trying to, you know, get by and, you know, make 
what what is it what's the you know what kind of things are in your setting book as far as um, background story that sort of thing in the uh, alliance setting guide which would be the third book we, we give a lot of background there's background in the core rules too um, but we try and keep it pretty concise just for brevity's sake um, which is hard for us because we like to write and talk <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, uh, uh, the, the core rules summarize, we, we have the themes of the setting, um, and uh, there's basically five themes that we go over. The first one is is in the trenches. It's one of the themes, like I said, you're basically a grunt trying to scrape by with a gear built by the lowest bidder most of the time. Uh, the second right. theme is overcoming speciesism uh, or racism for different species. And stereotypes, as you mentioned, you know, a lot of these species, some of them have been at war with each other before they were forced to sort of team up against the the, the arachnid threat. Um, so they, they all have sort of stereotypes about each other, some of which are sort of true, but they have to overcome that antagonism and, and uh, speciesism because if they don't cooperate, they're going to get wiped out. So even though you have the Fentari character, who is very sort of Machiavellian, he's probably not going to do anything that endangers the group because if he does, everybody's going to be toast. Uh, and then, uh, as Dave mentioned, with the big megacorps, we sort of have um, runaway capitalism as a theme, uh, you know, making it big as a theme. And uh, and the last theme is dark humor. It's uh, uh, We put that in there for two reasons. One, it's it's... Uh, you know, if we made the book super serious all the time, it'd be kind of boring. Uh, and the other reason is um, it's a coping mechanism used a lot in the military and with soldiers, and that's represented in the game. Um, so it's uh, it's it's there for two reasons. Yeah, and, and I I totally agree. Um, from a from a tone, it's really tough when you're talking about people who are like in the trenches. You know, sometimes being pounded down. You know, and gallows humor is just what happens right so um it's good that you built that in that these are the things you know that's what it, that's the, the guys in the trenches they're going to be making you know dark humor you know just like in like in the movie aliens where the where the all the marines are kind of you know talking knowing that they're going into a dangerous situation but they're making jokes and crack it up because it's what they got to do so that's cool i like that that's a lot i like that a lot um so what um so we talked i just want to circle back we we kind of talked a little bit about there's four books um and i know we're talking primarily about the core book but can you give me like the the give me the two three sentence kind of overview I, you know there's the alliance book which gives give me just a feel so that people want to push to get those um extra uh, uh goals reached to see if the, they can get these other books what what comes in the play in the different books um, so in the Carnage Companion, which is the second book, it has archetype characters for our four standard teams, pirates, soldiers, mercenaries, and spies. So there are ready-to-play characters for um, those four teams. Uh, we have, because uh, it's Battle Wars, there's more weapons, more equipment, more gear. Uh, we also introduce uh, cybernetics in okay. the Carnage Companion, uh, and we introduce vehicles which include ultra armor. So that's our fourth fourth level of armor. We've got body armor, heavy armor, mechanized armor, and ultra armor are essentially walking tanks. They're the, the mecha of the Battle Wars game. Um, and those can be a lot of fun. <laughs> and then in the Alliance setting guide, we've got a big GM setting, or section rather. Uh, we have the um, uh, setting background, and it includes... Uh, travel, commerce, uh, bounty hunting. Uh, there's there's a ton of information in there about the battle or setting. If you want to dig in and figure out what that universe is like, we also introduce uh, spacecraft in the setting guide and spacecraft combat rules, which use a lot of the chase rules oh, from okay. Savage Worlds. Okay. Uh, yeah. And it's a spaceship. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of unique in that uh, all our spacecraft have deck plans. So we didn't want it to be this ship versus that ship because it's about the characters. So when you're doing 
spaceship versus spaceship combat. The characters are moving within those deck plans and they're doing stuff. Um, Dave, you want to you wanna describe the space combat? Sure. Um, so coming back to your question on is it sci-fi or, or not? It, yeah, we're actually using an inertial frame of reference. The frame of reference is the slower ship. Kind of the same kind of a thematic thing that was going on with the chase of the Millennium Falcon in Star Wars, right? Everything's coming from the perspective of everything coming at the Falcon. Mm -hmm. Its speed is irrelevant. It doesn't matter whether it's going one mile an hour, a million miles an hour, 10 million miles. It, you don't know how fast it's going, and it doesn't matter, right? What matters is the ships are getting closer, and they're pulling away, right? The TIE fighters come in, they go out. So similar kind of a concept here. We have a ship. It's One of the ships is going to be faster. One of them is going to be slower. And this other ship's going to be closing in, kind of like, uh, or even thinking like Caribbean and, and uh, going back to pirate days, right? Faster ship starts catching up. They start shooting at each other. If they can do enough damage, maybe one of them shuts down or maybe one of them decides, you know, maybe we don't want to get blown into little tiny bits. Uh, and so that's kind of how the, the theme of the, arc, uh, of, the, uh, of the combat goes is closing in and getting to a boarding act in general because kind of a really valuable thing to be blowing up so yeah you could blow it up but it's worth a lot more to you if it's not blown up um and from a gameplay perspective then each of the functions of a ship has a station associated with it the characters have the choice of operating that station or well there's a guy coming in the door here they may shoot you do you want to shoot them or do you want to dodge the uh, other ship that's coming in so you've got choices on how to interact, and it's all integrated into the gameplay at a turn level on the character's actions, right? You've got choices. Drive the ship, shoot a gun at another ship, shoot a gun at a person in the room. What do you want to do? Uh, so you've got stations around uh, engineering, piloting, a captain's chair, gunnery, those kinds of things. And people can move around because they may have somebody who's in the engineering department that gets taken out, and they may have to run down and go, pick back up and try to get things back online oh well, that makes that makes that makes sense you know give people so it's more it's not the ship's not important it's really the it's all about getting a boarding action and then playing it from there mostly very cool yeah. and, okay. and each one of those bridge stations has its own unique um uh, uh, set of chase actions for in, in savage worlds terminology so if you're manning the gunnery station, you have a set of chase actions that you can do that are different from the person who's piloting the ship so that uh, everyone can sort of contribute to that chase. Because really, it's, you know, we want all the characters to be doing something. It's no fun if you're the Marine and you're just watching everybody and the pilot is doing all the work and you're just sitting around. We really wanted to encourage that. And one of the ways we encourage that is to make it easy to board the other ship. Because, you know, it's, in Battle Wars, we really like that. Yeah. That face to face negotiation. <laughs> I mean, it's really, it's really, you know, like small squad tactics that are important, right? The team working together to mm -hmm. to solve the problem, you know, by gently killing people, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, hey, all right, that was um, that's pretty cool. Uh, again, like I said, if you're watching this now, um, even if the Kickstarter's over, all this material is really important, but. Let's talk about the Kickstarter. Um, when's it starting? Um, how long is it going? Um, anything that people should know about? It's going to start uh, hopefully uh, either late May or early June. Uh, it just depends when we get our, our, our the Battle Wars book we're working on now out the door for, for classic <laughs> Battle Wars. Um, but it probably will start in the next 30 days. It's going to be a 30-day campaign. Uh, and once, if, if the pledge goal uh, is met, that funds the core rule book. And then we've got stretch goals. And, and what we're planning on doing is, you know, each stretch goal we unlock, that's another book that, uh, you know, people can get. You, know, you unlock the Carnage Companion and then you unlock the Alliance setting. So really, it will depend on how much people want it. If you want those books, um, then, you know, you pledge towards the campaign and you'll unlock more books. We're hoping to have some Battle Lords themed merchandise. We we always have our our classic toe tags, dog tags, um, coasters, t shirts, and things like that. But one of the things that we're going to try and do for this Kickstarter is have Battle Lords themed playing cards 
and poker chips because if you're playing Savage Worlds, yep. you need playing cards and Benny counters. No, number one theming thing and Savage Worlds is your deck and your bennies. Make them, make them, make them your own for sure. So, <laughs> um, so how much um, did you guys know how much you're you're going to ask for the different tiers? You know, print copy that, um, or is that yet to be determined? We're still determining that, mostly because of the way the the market is right now. Um, paper prices and shipping prices are nuts, fluctuate monthly. So we'll probably set that right before we hit the go button. Uh, we've had to uh, pick a different printer than we normally use because the, the printer that we have been using has just become untenable. And uh, we're having a lot of issues, well, not we, but, but the industry in general, we is having a lot of issues right now with shipping. So we probably are going to switch over to a domestic printer to try and avoid all of those shipping uh, uh, issues. But uh, we should. Uh, have a better idea uh, before we launch. Yeah, we're, we're definitely living in supply chain craziness right now. So, uh, but we won't get into that. Uh, so, hey, thank you so much. Um, it was pretty cool to talk to you guys. I When I read through the book, I was going, this definitely had a different take on, on things. And it, you can you can feel that, that feeling that you had in your original core book, trying to bring that over to Savage Worlds to, you know, give something to Savage Worlds players in the sci-fi, but kind of bring that those interesting elements that are a little bit different than what Savage Worlds does. So it was, it was a pretty good read, um, very interesting. Um, I look forward to the following it as as you guys get further along. Um, and I, I wish you tons of luck. Again, if you're watching this, it's still valid information no matter when you watch it. Um, so thanks again, uh, guys. And um, any last thoughts before we close it off and uh, let folks get on with their day? <laughs> Get, get back to uh, corralling cats, um, you know, uh, what, what is it, you know, pushing people down, <laughs> whatever it is, you know, a guy's got the rules to do, so. The only, thing, the only thing I would say would be that Battle, Battle Lords has a 30-year history, so it's got a lot of uh, information on the setting out there. So if you want something with a rich background that is literally spans our galaxy and has so much playability in that on it. It's for you. If you like the military sci-fi games, um, because you can literally do just about anything in battle Lords, whether it's like, uh, ice pirates, or, uh, if you're going towards serenity or starship troopers, all those things are, are easy to do with it. So adaptability is kind of the strong suit. Very cool. And that is a good thing. So on that note, I think that's a great way to close it off. So thank you, Tony. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Kurt. Um, and uh, hopefully everybody jumps on uh, Kickstarter, supports you guys, because it's always great to have as much Savage Worlds material out there for the system. And, and yeah, they might really enjoy that and then want to go use the, the original rules because that may even add, you know, even more flavor. So um, everybody, hope everybody keeps an eye on that. So again, this was Carl with Tabletop Tango. Look at the bubbles, do the stuff, visit our site, contact us, do all that good stuff. And we'll have all the information um, on the team here and the product. And, and um, you know, we'll, we'll hope that everybody enjoys the Kickstarter and gets on it. So thanks again, everybody. Um, have a great, uh, great night whenever you're watching us. And we'll talk to everybody later. It's a savage world. Strangers are weird world. It's a savage world. Passage to explore. It's a savage world in the land of the dead.